Hi everyone, my name is Ken Kirschbaumer. I'm the editorial director of the Sports Video Group and welcome to the 2020 SVG Summit Connect Tech Tour for the audio category. So glad you joined us. We have five presentations from five of our top audio sponsors, Calrec Digico, Clearcom, Joseph Electronics, Shore, and the Telos Alliance. And before they get into their presentations, um, I spent a few minutes with two of our audio experts involved in the SVG community, Henry Rousseau, who is the ESPN Associate Director of Remote Production Operations, and Carl Malone, who is the NBC Sports and Olympics Audio Systems Engineering Designer. Uh, both of them took some time out of their schedules to join us for a few minutes to discuss what's on their agenda with respect to the next generation audio products. So please welcome Henry and Carl. So our goal today was to kind of introduce the tech tour to talk with you both about some audio trends that you're seeing um, across the board, so relatively quickly, so for a few minutes. So Henry, let's have you start. What, what do you see as the big trends in audio product development in the last you know, six months to a year? Well, if I, I was just joking before, if it starts with an I and ends in a P, uh, for us, transport is probably the key um, um, uh, equipment use that we're, that, that we're using today, uh, primarily if it uh, could be transported over IP and has the least amount of latency for our announced teams and for uh, anything that has to do with control room, talkback, mix minuses, and things like that. Uh, that's probably the things that we're most concerned about. Uh, the other thing from maybe a broader audio standpoint is um, utilizing kind of existing equipment and actually just trying to get uh, have access to uh, the areas that we used to have access to uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, the normal truck arsenal is still in, in play for us right now because of our, uh, our limited uh, access on site. So it's quick in, quick out, and get the job done. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Carl, so what are you seeing? I mean, obviously the Olympics, um, I guess, are hopefully going to be happening next year. I've heard the rumblings, at least. I've got some internal communications from NBC on regarding the Olympics. Um, what's your sense as far as some of the audio trends you've been seeing and paying attention to? Yeah, well, Henry's right. Uh, you know, IP for 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 sure is, is huge, and we've come such a long way. I think, um, and obviously, very quickly. You know, with the pandemic, you know, as difficult as as it has been, there's been a very steep learning curve, and everything that we've sort of learned very very quickly, and and kind of shared among certainly an audio shared among um, uh, each of the networks. Um, I think you know, as Henry said, like remote access is huge. You know, having announcers at home. Um, being able to deliver like fast audio to them and from them and having their normal communication patterns, but then for them to have like a robust network at home. Um, so not only having announcers at home and having them remote, but also like remote access to equipment, you know, uh, you know, can we get into a piece of equipment into a console or into a, an audio playback device or a codec and configure it and, and use it as we would normally do um, in our, uh, we'd normally do it in our home uh, production control room, or I wouldn't say home production control room, but our network production control room. And can we do that from home, for example? So yeah, remote access, um, and, uh, and, you know, remote, remote announcers, keeping them at home and being able to give them the same facilities. Gotcha. So I just might also add, uh, Ken, I might just also add too, that positions that we normally used to have on site, such as communication supervisors and things like that, those are now being done remotely as well. So making sure that the, as, as, as Carl said, having robust, uh, internet, at, uh, at your home in order to control that equipment, making that equipment accessible remotely, I think is, uh, has been key to, uh, to, all, to everybody. And the communications with that as well, having robust communications, very fast, and, and just having either it be a, a, a panel, a uh, comms panel, for want of a better word, and just have the, the, you know, the same sort of um, uh, um, you know, latency or, or um, just having, having that feel the same for uh, producers or audio people who are at home. Right, right. Well, last question for you both. I mean, obviously there's been a lot of movements with the next gen audio and, you know, 7.1 and Dolby Atmos and what have you. Um, has this whole pandemic kind of pushed those timelines out as far as, um, you know, the, the developing those workflows and, and best practices? Or is that still on track to become a thing in 2023, 24? Well, I think, go ahead, yeah, Henry. But, uh, I was just going to say from our standpoint, I um, mean, contractually, we're still under some obligations to provide uh, Dolby Atmos to some of our, uh, our vendors. But for the most part, uh, we are just pretty much uh, just keeping our heads above water right now. 
I think uh, we're, we're still developing, still testing. The labs have just moved from uh, our, our engineering headquarters to people's basements. They've set up uh, labs with equipment and it actually, actually it gives us probably more of a realistic um, uh, 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 testing because we are in the home environment. So finding out, finding out what's uh, coming off of your local cable box probably is more important than what's being done in a Christian lab. Sure, sure. Carl? Yeah, we, uh, we've been lucky enough to kind of maintain our, uh, certainly as far as uh, immersive audio 5.1.4, um, be able to do that on, on football and, and golf. And, you know, I guess I'm kind of surprised that we were able to kind of maintain that. Uh, it's not like we're breaking new ground. We're sort of doing what we've done before in previous seasons. And the audio part has never been a very big lift. It's been the 1080p HDR 4K, which is, you know, it's been the pictures that have been <laughs> the heavy lift. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that we can continue that. Um, you know, as Henry says, we're, you know, a lot of us are still in the basement, so it's hard to, it's hard to invent. Well, it's not that hard to invent. Some things it's hard to invent. Um, but you know, it's, it's, um, uh, it, it's hard to, uh, to get everybody, um, you know, involved in, in new ventures, which have never been done before unless it's, you know, COVID related and, and remote related. Right, right. Excellent. Well, thanks, guys, for your time. Really appreciate it. Stay safe and healthy and hopefully see you in 2021. Right. <laughs> thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. It's impossible to sum up um, 2020. It's been a really challenging year with lots of uh, different things going on at CalREC. Uh, we've been really pushing the boundaries of how to help our customers and our uh, client base, dealing with working remotely and dealing with uh, different infrastructure changes as things go forward. Despite not being able to get out and see people or go to trade events like the SVG Summit, we've spoken to many of our customers. It's been a year of accelerated change and at the end of it, we've learned a lot about what we can make possible. It's been an opportunity to get more involved with our customers and to help them achieve more in a very restrictive environment. So of course, the big news for 2020 is the shipment of the Impulse Core. We've now started to ship this console back end uh, to a number of uh, installations, both in studios and in OB trucks. Um, the big news about Impulse is really related to SIMT2110 native connectivity. So Impulse can sit uh, and be part of a SIMT2110 network. The other big part of Impulse is the new Bluefin 3 processing uh, core, which is the largest single processing engine for audio mixing on the planet. Uh, it provides up to 4,000 channels which can be split across multiple consoles and also allows for different variable license to be put in, which gives pre uh, customers an upgrade path as well. Impulse also expands on our 3D immersive mixing capability for next generation audio applications. With the addition of height pan controls, immersive bussing up to 7.1.4 and importantly down mixing built in as well. That's a big thing. Lately we've been talking to Dolby, who are central to the development of immersive sound for sports. Events like eSports are embracing immersive for delivery to devices and enabled headphones. Impulse provides a practical implementation for immersive sound without having to worry about bus or channel counts. Impulse is fully compliant with SIMT2110-30 and has built-in support for NMOS ISO 4 and ISO 5. MMOS is vital for creating your streams and controlling your IP flows. MMOS is a standardized protocol providing a discovery and advertisement over ISO 4 and connection management over ISO 5. In fact, MMOS and 2110-30 support is built into all our IP-enabled equipment. Rob, can you tell us more about that? Is, is that Peter from Mobile TV Group? Hi guys, it's good to see you. Uh, what's, what's new with CalREC? Hey Peter, glad you asked. Over in the US, we've been talking to broadcasters about our Type R. Type R has the same SMPTE 2110 compliant features, the same built-in support for NMOS, and the same connectivity over COTS. That means it's compatible with lots of other third-party equipment, which many broadcasters will already own, like routers. But how big is it? Uh, you know, we don't always need a you know, huge, large desk. Well, like Impulse, 
Type R has scalable DSP packs and scalable surfaces. There are three hardware components which can be used in any configuration, a six fader panel, a large and small soft panel. Broadcasters can run multiple mixers from one core and that core can be remote from the mix location. Operators don't even need hardware, it can be virtual. Type R panels can be plugged in remotely and it also plays well with station automation systems as well as CalRAC Assist. Okay, but uh, what is Assist again? Assist is a web-based UI which provides full control over console parameters from a Mac or PC and provides an easy way to work remotely. While we're on the subject of remote working, hello Peter, good to see you. Remote working has been the headline for development this year. CalRAC Assist has played a big part and we've been working with PRG on mixing techniques with A1s, working in secure and managed locations. What's going on here, Steve? Hey, Chris, how you doing? So what, we, what we're doing here is a distributed production model, which has uh, one of our Artemis consoles set up with us here in our shop in LA. And we have another Artemis uh, set up with a production partner that we have in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And we are fully controlling that console from here in Los Angeles. What's so special about working this way? The advantage of doing it this way, you've got triple redundancy. So um, should the primary link go down, you can then uh, log on using the CalRec Assist uh, web GUI and still have control over that uh, remote console. With us, it's in Tulsa. If both of those links go down, you still have local control over the console in, in Tulsa. So you're set no matter what. The, uh, it's, the cool thing is with remote, you have full control over faders, mics, EQ, routing, and, and, and a lot more in the console. So it, it's really comprehensive. What about latency? Lots of people obviously want to know about latency. Uh, our test was done over open internet. Uh, so latency was, was a little variable. But on a dedicated line, we expect LA to New York to be maybe roughly around 50 milliseconds or so, which is really good for this purpose. If you're looking for ways to protect your business through remote working, or you want more information on CalRec's IP strategy, or you just fancy a catch up and a chat after all this time apart, please get in touch. Welcome to the SVG Tech Tour. This year's SVG is focusing, as are we, on IP-based solutions for our customers to work in different kinds of ways. COVID has really changed everyone's workflow, and we have a lot of information for you about how many of our customers are using our technologies in a wide variety of different um, kinds of applications based on these IP solutions. Thanks again for your time. We look forward to you hearing the voices of our customers. So my name is Jim Dugan. I'm the CEO of JetWave Wireless, and uh, we have an office in uh, DC, and we have an office in New York, and I'm in New York now. And we do a lot now also that's cloud-based. We have a whole cloud-based offering that's evolved over the last 12 months like everybody else, but um, it's riding heavy on the new on the EHS frames and that sort of thing. So uh, ClearCom's an integral part of, of JetWave. As COVID happened and remote work started, we were doing a lot of rentals with uh, where we would integrate LQ and um, and FreeSpeak and a lot of it really it was LQ sort of driven where people wanted to connect sites uh, and and have comms at either end, different endpoints, different flavors of endpoints from wireless to hardwired to panels, and LQ quickly uh, just rose up as like the tool to solve those problems. At this point in my life, I realized the most important thing to me is connecting, right, with people, and uh, it's it trumps all things. And so the fact that we're 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 just connection animals and um, human beings, and and the fact that we're just scrambling to try to create connection with each other, um, and that these tools are the tools that we have to do it. Cool. Hey, my name is Oz. I'm uh, running a company called Media Streamwave. So. The simplicity of the whole infrastructure kind of got me into ClearCom more and more. And, and then when COVID hit, um, I'm not going to lie, I, I I have not used Agent IC until uh, June of this year. 
the coolest thing about the system is that because Agent IC is on the smartphone, suddenly this <laughs> comm system is available that at any time if the person is sitting in their car and they didn't know they were supposed to be on a call or they, you know, they can't be in their office, they can easily jump on this in their car through Bluetooth and be listening or participating in production. Uh, you, you can't even tell it's a virtual panel. I mean, uh, it's it's as real time as you can imagine. So basically, when a client comes to you and says, hey, we want to use an agent IC system, you know there's something there. My name is Brady Balabi. I'm with uh, Sound and Vision Entertainment, SAV. We've been approached with some interesting requests and challenges given the current situation in the pandemic. Um, agent IC enabled us to execute some of these large jobs like NFL draft um, and have people work from home or while they're out walking their dog, whatever. Clients have come to us with the challenge of, of using remote IP comms and other manufacturers, um, they do it, but it's very clunky and it's, it's not intuitive for the end user. We employed um, a large clear comm system for the US Open golf uh, tournament as well. Uh, the great thing about Agent IC is that the with a small one sheet and a download, we have people online immediately, and there's no issues with uh, connectivity um, or people losing connectivity um, like some of the competitors out there are are experiencing. Hi, my name is Sid Barbstein. I'm the senior vice president here at Bill Young Productions. We're a 35 year old organization um, that lives in a couple of different worlds. We live in the music and entertainment space as well as uh, producing content and uh, unique uh, creative solutions for corporate America. We are loving the IP version of ClearCom and I think it'll be the way we do business now in the future Hello, my name is Bo Monahan. I'm the Director of Technology at Show Imaging in Vista, California. In early May, we had to transform almost overnight, but now IP-based comm is the only way to get everyone together to produce our shows. ClearCom really paved the way for Show Imaging to deliver very successful multi-city virtual events for thousands of attendees by providing an easy and clear way to communicate around the globe. I'm Sean McCluskey. I'm the National Remote and Production Manager at uh, Ross Production Services. Um, yeah, we've, we've been using ClearCom for quite a while. Uh, we've actually, we had in a few trucks, uh, something we've had in a few of our trucks since the beginning. Um, so something we've always looked to, uh, to use. It's been a great partnership uh, between us and ClearCom. Yeah, with, with Agent IC and, and, and the other IP infrastructure that we've been using uh, through ClearCom, it's, it's been integral in everything that we've done. Uh, we would not be able to do what we are currently doing without it. You know, the, the communication has just been, it's been great. You know, people have really come to come to liking it and, and, and the ease of use on the user end and also on our end has been, has been fantastic. So thanks for joining us today on our uh, overview of how our customers are using our IP solutions to talk to each other. We look forward to sharing more information with you again through all the normal channels.
Hello, fellow SVG members. It's Ben with Sure. I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining us today. In this short video, we'll be discussing the new exciting collaboration between Quantum 5X Systems, Q5X, and Sure, featuring the latest cutting edge wireless technology designed for sports. I feel that most users in this group are familiar with Q5X's existing ultra portable transmitters. However, if you're new to their product line, Q5X transmitters are widely used in many sports audio applications due to their small size and unique feature set. You can find Q5X transmitters sewed into players' jerseys, hidden as plant mics in cups on the green, or perhaps on a surfing video shoot due to some models being completely submersible. I imagine many watching this video have used these same Q5X transmitters in fun and unique ways with NBA, MLB, NHL, CFL, WNBA, or with our partners ESPN, CBS, ABC, NBC, Fox Sports, and more. Historically, Q5X transmitters were used with analog receivers such as Shure UHF-R series and others. With UHF-R now discontinued and digital systems being proprietary, there was an urgent need for Q5X to take these transmitters digital. This move allows the users of Q5X to enjoy the benefits only digital wireless can provide. Channel density, sound quality, and enhanced reliability are just some of the features where digital wireless reigns supreme over their analog counterparts. Sure's engineering team worked hard to develop an ultra-small PCB assembly to be used in Q5X's mechanical housings. Essentially, the DNA of Axiom Digital Transmitters is now inside of Q5X housings. This resulted in the addition of several new transmitters which are compatible with the popular Sure Axiom Digital ecosystem. Each of these new Q5X transmitters is familiar in outward appearance, but bristling with the latest Axiom Digital technology inside. The first transmitters in the lineup are the Player Mic series. These flexible wearable transmitters are designed to be worn close to the body and are typically placed in a sewn pocket in a player's jersey. There are two versions, a short and a long, with the main difference being more runtime with a longer version due to having a larger internal battery. Runtime is 4 hours and 8 hours respectively. Player mics feature a rubberized coating, a detached 1-pin limo jack for safety, and are slightly bendable in the middle. These transmitters are the only ones available that are certified by major sporting organizations to be safe for their players in the event they fall on one during play. Hence why the jack is removed from the body of the transmitter itself and extended a little bit out. The second transmitter is the Aquamic series. Just like the name implies, these transmitters are designed for water applications and are completely submersible up to 10 meters. Aquamic also has the benefit of having the longest runtime in the series with up to 14 hours. The waterproof 6-pin Limo connector allows for not only microphone connectivity, but also for USB throughput. Q5X is also known for their Mic Commander remote control technology, which allows for complete wireless control of Q5X transmitters. Using the 2.4 GHz band, Mic Commander is now upgraded to version 2 to set and control these new Axiom Digital compatible transmitters. Mic Commander is useful for many things such as putting transmitters to sleep to save battery, changing frequencies, changing audio settings, and more. Sure will distribute and sell both versions of the player mic, the short and the long, as well as two versions of the aqua mic, the regular and long life, along with the Mic Commander. Other popular variants such as the Coach Mic, Incognito, and other models may be ordered from Q5X directly or via their dealer network. For more information regarding the new Q5X Axiom Digital Compatible Transmitters, please feel free to reach out to me directly or the Sure and Q5X team. I'm looking forward to seeing where Axiom Digital and Q5X will be used in your next sporting application. Hi, I'm Larry Schindel. I'm a product manager with Linear Acoustic, and we're part of the Telos Alliance. Today, I'd like to introduce you to ATSC 3.0. Now, ATSC 3.0 is going to be able to deliver a much more cinematic experience to you and your viewers. So really, what better place to introduce you to it from than an actual theater? Let's go take a look at what ATSC 3.0 is. ATSC 3.0 is the next generation TV standard for the US, South Korea, and potentially other countries. 
It's being marketed under the brand name of Next Gen TV. So when you go into the Best Buy to look for a TV or some other decoder or set-top box, look for that Next Gen TV logo, and you'll know that that's an ATSC3 receiver. ATSC3 is built on the same internet protocol backbone as today's popular streaming media platforms. So ATSC3 is more than just broadcast television. This can go to mobile devices, cars, gaming consoles, that's tablets, etc. And it's really designed to bring together the over-the-air transmission along with over-the-top content. This means it can support hybrid delivery methods, such as primary signal coming over the air, and additional content or information being streamed across the Internet. On the audio side of things, ATSC 3.0 takes advantage of something that we call next generation audio. Next generation audio includes a lot of new features and functions that will be very useful going forward. Linear Acoustic offers three products for next generation audio workflows. The first one is the LA5300. This is a Dolby AC4 encoder for ATSC 3 workflows. It can also encode Dolby Digital or Dolby Digital Plus for your existing ATSC 1 or other MVPD delivered services. It also includes real time loudness control, options for Nielsen and Varence watermarking. It also supports up to four processing instances, so you can encode your audio services for your ATSC3, your ATSC1, and your other delivery requirements all simultaneously. It supports 3 gig SDI, along with 10 channels of AES3IO and AES67 in support of SMPTE 2110, Dash 30, and 31. There are also options for a MATI card or to bring the SDI up to Quadlink 3G for UHD workflows. The next unit is the LA5291, and this is a Dolby Atmos encoder. When you're delivering Dolby Atmos via Dolby Digital Plus with jock information instead of Dolby AC4. This unit can encode Dolby Digital Plus jock from PCM or transcode Dolby ED2 into Dolby Digital Plus jock. It can encode Dolby ED2 out at the venue to deliver to your broadcast center and at the broadcast center decode that ED2 stream into PCM or transcode it right into Dolby Digital Plus jock for delivery to the final viewer. We also offer upmixing in a standalone unit called the Upmax ISC. This unit is capable of accepting a stereo or a 5.1 input signal and upmixing that to an immersive audio source such as 5.1 plus 4. Or if you're using surround sound, it can upmix stereo to 5.1 as well. This unit only deals with PCM audio, so there is no support for encoded audio such as Dolby Digital Plus or Dolby AC4. The latency is low enough that you can use this in a live production. So this can be inserted on a mixing console to upmix bumper music and effects and legacy pieces to immersive audio. Or this can sit in your air chain at the broadcast center and upmix interstitials and advertisements that are not produced natively in immersive audio. It will automatically sense when it's receiving an immersive audio input and it will automatically do the right thing. So if it's receiving an immersive audio input, it will pass that through without processing with the same latency so that your AV sync is not affected. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have questions or if we can offer guidance or assistance on any questions that you might have. Thanks for watching. Okay, well, that wraps up today's audio tech tour. So thanks again for joining us. And uh, please, of course, be sure to visit all of our sponsors online, Calrec Digico, Clearcom, Joseph Electronics, Shure, Telos Alliance. Be sure to reach out to them through the SVG Summit Connect uh, tool, which is a great way to reach out to people. And also, of course, if you schedule three meetings with some of our sponsors, SVG will donate $100 to the SVG Sports Broadcasting Fund. Thanks again for your time, and we'll see you soon.